Welcome to your weekly airplane news update. This is the week of March 14th, 2022. This week we got four stories. The first one is Alaska Airlines is launching a flight academy. This is kind of a big deal. Uh, we'll talk about the an update on FAA legal interpretation for instrument ratings. This is an interesting one. Uh, we'll also talk about the NTSB that says that a component failure caused the Joby crash that we reported on a couple weeks ago. And then lastly, we'll talk about the FAA that's going to lift the grounding of a certain types of United 777. So let's get to it. And the first story this week is the Ascent Pilot Academy. This is Alaska Airline and its regional airline, Horizon, uh, have decided to launch a flight academy. They're going to partner with Hillsboro uh, Aero Academy in Oregon. Uh, Hillsboro had actually been around for quite a bit. And uh, the students are going to be earning their private pilots all the way to commercial. And there's a contingent uh, job offer that's going to be made to them to become first officer at Horizon. Uh, Horizon operates a bunch of different aircraft, including the Dash 8 and the Q400 and then the Embraer uh, 175. And uh, if you want more information, you can find this. We're going to put a link down in here. It's uh, it's it's an interesting thing what we're seeing in the industry right now with uh, regional airlines or even major airlines that are deciding to start investing in flight training. Um, as some of you may know, this was my job uh, before I, I created Pilot Institute, uh, managing flight training organizations. And um, this is something we've been asking for the airline industries to do for a long time. Uh, as the airlines are finding that there is a, a short supply of pilots willing to do the job, uh, they're starting to finally invest and give people a, uh, an, a job offer before they even start the flight training. So uh, hopefully this is something that continues even as a uh, job for pilots become more scarce, which we know it's a, it's an up and down thing. Eventually it might happen, but uh, I think this is a step in the right direction. The next story this week is an update to an FAA legal interpretation, actually two FAA legal interpretations. And over time, what's happened is that the FAA or two judges had said that uh, in order to get your instrument rating, you needed to shoot um, several types of instrument approaches uh, during the check ride. So you needed to pick different types of, uh, of instrument approaches. Now, that's actually not what the regulation says. And these FAA legal interpretations have been, well, essentially saying something that is not in the actual FAA regulation, but because it was interpreted by a judge, it is something that the DPE and the Czech pilots had to do. Uh, now, we're, so we're back to reading the regulation the way that it should be read, and uh, where it says that you need to do a precision and non-precision approaches, but it doesn't say in there that you have to do a specific different one every single time that you go for your check right. So um, we'll put a link down in the description so you can see more information about this, but I think this is actually good news for those of you that uh, have a check ride coming around the corner. Uh, I think the check ride is going to be a little bit easier, especially for instrument uh, as you're uh, shooting approaches during the check ride. All right, the next story this week has to do with Joby and a crash that had happened a couple weeks ago. Uh, we had mentioned that uh, they were doing testing and, you know, things happened during testing. Uh, nobody was on board of the aircraft. That's, you know, the reason why they do testing to make sure everything is safe. Now, the NTSB is coming back and they're saying that uh, there was a component failure uh, that caused the uh, the crash. Now, the aircraft did not have anyone, like I said, and um, and there was a post-crash fire. Uh, the NTSB shows that the, the data shows the aircraft was flying 275 miles an hour during the testing uh, prior to the crash, and it was traveling around 114 knots uh, at the time of the crash. So if you want more information, we'll put a link down in here. Uh, I think it's interesting to see uh, EV tall aircraft getting into the next phases, which is one step closer to having them. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, well, I'm not getting in one of those because it crashes. Well, you know, those are things that happen during the testing phase. This is why they have to do testing. Okay, the last story this week is the FAA is finally lifting the grounding of a certain type of uh, 777. Now, this only actually applies to United Airlines. They're the only ones who fly 777 uh, that have uh, Pratt & Whitney uh, PW4000S engines. Uh, there was a, uh, an engine failure in Colorado in back in February of last year. And if you remember, there were pieces of the engine that had been that had fallen on the ground. People found pieces in their front yard, which is never something that you want to see. So uh, those engines had been grounded or the aircraft that had these engines had been grounded. And the FAA is now finally ready to uh, to put them back up in the air. So uh, I guess that's good news for United because they're the only ones who fly that combination of uh, aircraft and engine. OK, that's all I have for you this week. Like, subscribe, leave your comments and I'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.